Hi, it's Hazel, and welcome to my channel, Hazel and Aka Design. I am here to report that I made it safely to and from Winnipeg, albeit uh, I'm totally, <laughs> not totally, I've definitely had some life-altering experiences and have made some lifetime friends. Um, I'm taping this on March 25th, got home last night, um, <clears throat> and I'll post it today as well. Now, I do have a few uh, days worth of scheduled videos, but my intention is to uh, squeeze in a few more uh, videos from Winnipeg. Not only was the thrifting great, and I'll share some of that with you, but um, I got to meet some subscribers of mine. I got to meet some people who will hopefully be converted into subscribers. And, of course, I had nothing but fun and adventure with uh, both Kim uh, Newberg and Thelma. Now, um, <coughs> I don't understand the concept myself but apparently there are some people who don't care for haul videos and I guess you know let let this be your warning if you don't care about things like that then you probably want to just you know avoid <laughs> avoid however uh, I can guarantee that these videos from Winnipeg or that I'm doing post Winnipeg will be different in the sense that um, <laughs> despite that whole what happens in Winnipeg stays in Winnipeg, I'm going to be telling some tales and I'm going to be sharing some stories. And um, yeah, I think it may be worth a laugh or two and worth your while to tune in. I should also say that one of the... Um, you know, the lure was to, to uh, you know, put a face to, or faces to names. So that was part of the appeal of this trip. There was also the whole idea of thrifting in, a, in another province. But I have to say, the thing that I looked forward to most was having time to just talk to like-minded people. If you find yourself in a situation like I do, where family and friends and those in your circle of acquaintances don't understand and can't fathom why on earth we do what we do, uh, there is a huge uh, relief and a huge blessing in finding in spending time with people who are like-minded. We didn't need to explain or justify um, I, I like to say like the, the event on Saturday was a day long crop. Now I've said before, I've never been, um, I've never, you know, drunk the scrapbooking, uh, Kool-Aid. So I was, I started telling the women there, especially the diehard uh, cra uh, scrapbookers, that I was a crop virgin. And I said, so please be gentle with me. Um, but I, you know, it's just, it's mind blowing. It truly is mind blowing to be around so many people um, that just gather for the sake of doing what they love, supporting each other, caring about each other, you know, some sometimes pecking at each other, because, hey, we are, still are all women, so there might be a little bit of pecking and poking, um, but it's all done in fun, and, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll have more to say about that in the upcoming videos, I'm sure. Anyway, let me tell you about my arrival. So, I um, haven't shown my face on video. However, there is uh, a thumbnail of me on my, I guess on my channel. No, where is it? I don't even know where it is. So Kim had some inkling of what I looked like. However, I have never seen her face. I didn't ask for a description. We didn't prearrange that, you know, well, I'll have a red carnation in my lapel, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. 
so I had also been assured that, <coughs> excuse me, that I would be, you know, that she'd have access to her aunt's vehicle and she would be doing, you know, all the driving. So I'm thinking, well, that's wonderful. Anyway, I'm coming down the escalator at the Winnipeg airport, fully expecting someone some female in the crowd to be holding a very discreet little sign with the word Hazel on it. So I'm sort of scanning the crowd and then I catch sight of these two women dressed in Ukrainian garb with a poster sized sign and a photo on it that has significance. It was, a, it was part of the, the inside story on the Happy Mail movement and Vitaimo Hazel, which means welcome. Well, my God, I burst out laughing. I get down the escalator. I get handed this braided Ukrainian bread. I can't think of, you know, the real word. Presented on a, on a um, embroidered, hand embroidered um, linen. I get a, a floral headpiece with the trailing red ribbons placed on my head flowers and of course we're all laughing ourselves so oh so who's the second one well the second woman is Thelma and of course I didn't know her from Adam either so I'm thinking what did I get myself into I have never had a welcome like that and don't ever expect to have another welcome like that Anyway, we round up my luggage and uh, pile into the into the uh, SUV, and um, so of course we're sort of you know nonstop talking. But uh, so are you hungry? You know, do you want to go and eat something? I and I'm thinking, you know what travel days are like. You get up early, or blah blah blah. I said, sure, I could eat. So where do they take me? Salvation Army. <laughs> Uh, like someone said, well, they are known for their food, aren't they? I mean, this was another indication of how these next several days would go. Because, of course, um, thrifting trumps everything. Not sleep, food, pee breaks, nothing is as important as the thrifting and the laughing. So... Um, we go through there, and then, of course, they take me to, I gather, what is something of a, maybe, I don't know if it's a land, I don't know how well it's known, or maybe just the locals know it, a place called Garwood Grill. Very homey, seemed to be hugely popular, great food. I think over the course of the days, I think we might have eaten there three times and all, just because, you know, sometimes you want the reliability of whatever. So... Anyway, we're walking into the restaurant and Thelma's carrying this, you know, about yay big um, red suitcase with a bright green ribbon tied around it. And, you know, again, haven't even looked at the menu yet. She's giving me this suitcase full of goodies. Now, because, um, let's just say I had a wee bit of a luggage <laughs> issue on the way home. Some things, you know, I had to, I had to make my suitcases work. Um, that's another story too. <coughs> anyway, I've gathered some of the things that were in the suitcase, but let's just say, thank goodness that Thelma and her husband are driving to Alberta in July to a wedding because the rest of my stuff is coming in that suitcase. So I kind of rearranged, put some heavier stuff in there. Um, anyway, let me, you know, probably enough babbling for now. Let me show you a few things. Now, um, via email, Kim and I had done a little bit of intel ahead of time. You know, what are people's, you know, sort of favorite colors, um, themes, blah, blah, blah. Just so, you know... I think all of us are, are willing to share with friends, but we also, we want it to be appreciated and we want to kind of hit the target if we possibly can. So um, the purple message got through. And, and I should say, I do love purple, but I also love burgundy and other jewel tones. Um, my first two kitchens were 
red. Now, mind you, that was the 70s, so, you know, what can I say? Um, so anyway, there is a pre preponderance of purple. So anyway, in that suitcase, oh, here's a salt shaker, but that's no salt shaker. It's full of these little, these little buttons. So that's all very cute, and it will find a place where I keep my buttons. But you know, you might want to start mentally adding up the weight of some of these things. A wooden stamp. Life is what happens to you when you're busy making other plans. I may even have this stamp. I'm not sure. I'll check. <clears throat> if you have taken... Now, um, Thelma's channel... Thelma's new to, to um, YouTube. Her channel is Swan Lake... It's Swan Lake. I'll, I'll put it in the description box. Um, she is part of the Happy Mail movement. And if you have received, you've sent her something, and if you have received something, you know that she um, makes beautiful, ornate, blingy stuff. <clears throat> so there was this bag of, of beads in it. Now, I had the, uh, um, the, uh, the pleasure, because Thelma drove one day as well, had the, the pleasure of uh, getting invited into Thelma's house and seeing her studio. I'm telling you, that too is a life-altering experience. Anyway... If you have watched Kim's videos, you know that she has beaded dangles covering her windows. You know, privacy is not an issue, so it's all decorative. <clears throat> well, Thelma's window is covered with those things. So these two women, of course, do the same thing. Oops, here's a stray one. I have to say, this is probably an idea I will be adopting. Now, some of my windows are in odd shape, and that could be an issue, but not a problem. Anyway, let me move this this thing, these out of the way. These are lovely Christmas ornaments that will find their way to my tree this, this December. And if I get them off here, maybe I won't have too much more of this glitter to deal with. So, also in the suitcase is this purple, like, you know, suede feeling or velveteen feeling bag. Oh, I should say, oh, these necklaces, the girls were wearing these things. You know, the, if you've ever seen any pictures of Ukrainian women, you know that red beads are a big deal. Again, heavy. Well, I thought this was just part of their costume. Um, but no, this was part of what I was taking home. So I got beads galore. But in also, oh, in the uh, suitcase was also these gorgeous decorative little scissors. And again, are those not perfect colors? I don't think I would ever attempt to do anything with them. But um, we all love just decorative things. So these will have pride of place as well. Anyway, in here were all of these. Oh, this also was in a pocket in the suitcase. These little, they almost look like icing flowers, but of course they're not. And I don't even think there's been any breakage. Like they're they're still all intact. So these little mauve uh, flowers. Anyway, this is what was in there. I don't have my rule. Or well, I guess I could figure out. This is one long thing. She puts these um, binder rings at the top so that they can be hooked on a curtain rod. And then just these blingy things, one after the other, covering her whole uh, window. Here's one in black. Sorry for the tangled part, but anyway, you get the idea. With this... this Pewter looking, uh, uh, what do you call it? Owl. And then, oh, here's a pink one. Oops, still come. Look at this. Look at this. 
the size of my, the, the palm of my hand. And then of course, this red one. So you can see how this could become, oh, somebody slipped this, to, oh. <laughs> so, <clears throat> of course, I got picked up at the airport and then, of course, I got returned to the airport yesterday. And, the, you know, we always made the plan the night before. I should say that every single day I was picked up before sunrise. So you can imagine how long the days were. Loved every minute of it, but just saying, the days were long. Anyway, so Kim texts and says, I just found out that there's an antique starting a sale starting at 10. You want to go? You want to go? So, <laughs> what am I? Dumb? Of course I want to go. So do you think that we didn't manage to go to an antique sale and one and, and Value Village before they dropped me off at the airport? <laughs> Just, uh, <clears throat> okay. This, this was in the suitcase. This is so luscious. So luscious. Now I think, you know, it looks like there might be some repair I'm going to have to do because um, let's just say that there, that I had a luggage problem. Now I thought I packed relatively light going there, you know, didn't stuff it to the gills, you know, thought, well, maybe I've brought too many clothes, but <laughs> Again, two pairs of pants for five days. That doesn't seem excessive. <coughs> anyway, I was trying to get stuff into those two suitcases. A checked bag, a carry-on, and I had kind of a handheld tote that I would stick my purse in, and that would be my personal item on the airplane. Oh, first of all, let me make one other uh, public service announcement. I have my passport here as a reminder. Um, I don't know what it's called in the States, but there's something in Canada called Nexus, N-E-X-U-S. And basically, it is supposed to, you go through an application process, a, a per, an in-person interview with border control people. And if you're, you know, not a, a criminal, uh, and if you seem to be a, a, you know, good upstanding citizen, you can get this, uh, Nexus card that allows you to pick almost like the express lane at the airport. Now, of course, I had gotten mine, uh, then COVID happened, and we know how many years uh, went by with that. Um, I had also noticed that sometimes the Nexus line is closed, whether you're doing a land crossing or by air. So anyway, as I was getting ready for this trip, I noticed, oh, damn, the thing expired on my birthday, which was March 6th. So I left it at home and I packed my passport instead as my picture ID. Anyway, I get to uh, the airport. Is this not the snazziest and most beautiful passport you've ever seen? And inside, I won't show you my picture, but inside they've got this plasticky thing. There's my mug shot and all these pages that have this like watermark type thing on it. Anyway, enough about my passport. So I say to the guy, I see the, the very short, quick Nexus line. I says, you know what? My card expired in March. And um, he says, well, do you have it on you? And I said, no, I left it safely at home. He says, well, the expiry period has been extended by five years. And I said, what? I mean, I was glad, but I, like, what? And he said, yes. And I'm thinking, well, that's great. But then, you know, sometimes employees don't know what they're talking about. So I did check it with three. <laughs> I mean, I was asking one woman, but there were two others standing by. They all confirmed that, yes, that in fact is true. So if I would have had my Nexus card, I wouldn't have had to take my laptop out of my uh, suitcase uh, or any other electronics and of course would have been in the short quick line um 
by the way, I never opened my laptop. So I could have had, I could have saved time and space by not taking it. I have learned so much about how to pack if I ever go on one of these types of trips again. So uh, the ladies were saying yesterday, because, you know, everybody's laughing at the state of my luggage going home. And I was able to pick up my bigger suitcase. And Kim was able to pick up my bigger suitcase. And she said, oh, if we can pick it up, it's got to be under 50 pounds. <laughs> no. Anyway, at the airport, uh, at that, the West Jed desk, you know, I hoisted on the scale. She says, it's over. She says, can you take some items out, put them in your other suitcase? Because I, I kind of thought maybe it's over and I'll have to pay the overweight fee. She said, because if you don't move some of that stuff over, um, the fee for being overweight is $105. So no way was that going to happen. <clears throat> I says, well, where do I do it? She says, do it right there. So I'm thinking, oh my God. So I very gingerly unzip it, thinking this suitcase could blow at any moment. I'd already, it was one of those, it's a hard shell thing. I had already used that little expansion panel. I'd barely gotten stuff in there. I only unzipped it enough to get my hand in and I start pulling stuff out, mostly textiles. <laughs> anyway, so I'm stuffing them in my, this carry-on thing, this tote bag that I'm carrying. And she kept checking the weight. And she says, we need to get it at least down to whatever it was. I can't remember because she was talking kilograms. And she says, and then, you know, I'll, I'll let it go. Well, I kept doing that. And I kept doing that. And I kept doing that. Eventually, I ended up with her adding this to the sticker or to the suit, to this luggage tag. 24.9 kilograms and this heavy, you know, this, I guess, warning to the baggage handlers that they, let me just, oh, I probably don't have one here. But to convert kilograms, 24.9, to convert to pounds is times 2.2. So even after I moved all that stuff, it was still well over 50 pounds. I have never been so worried, humiliated in my life because I'm thinking, OMG. So I'm I'm sort of talking to the women about this and <clears throat> they're saying, well, one thing I discovered is that none of us care about clothing, <laughs> care about fashion. Nobody was dolled up whatsoever. I could have worn my farm clothes. Um, they, and, and Kim says, and bring your oldest gaunch and you just throw one pair away every day. And, uh, and, uh, Thelma says, yeah, when she goes to Ukraine, you know, she takes clothing. I mean, it's still good, but it's stuff that she can, you know, easily leave behind and not feel bad about. So more lessons learned. Anyway. Okay. Let's carry on with this. Some of this stuff. I'll show you what is in here. So beautiful pink, a uh, purple. Kim, I mean, uh, Thelma, well, Kim tells me that Thelma loves saucy ladies. Uh, and that can mean, you know, tasteful nudes, like, you know, retro. Like back in the day, you know, sort of those calendar girls that <clears throat> maybe from the 50s or so, uh, certainly nothing that you see on <laughs> everyday TV. So the way this is constructed, let me just, wait, I'm, I don't want to. Oh, okay, so this is a tab. This, I hope I'm not butchering up this flip through. All of these, somehow she made this in such a way that there are these, and everything is heavy duty, like this is watercolor paper. This little pouch here with this tucked into it. She printed this paper. She binds it with ribbon. Adds another one of her heavy-duty things, you know, with double matting. And then this lovely feathery trim. I didn't really get a good chance to look at this because, I mean, there was 
we had places to go and people oh that's another thing here's uh another booklet same scenario tucked in here this look at this and doesn't this just remind you of old millinery flowers and another glamour girl and a and a glitzy brooch here or or piece of a uh, some old jewelry another one Oh, this was probably an earring because there's a, its mate is over there. Oops, that got bent. Oh, I think we uh, this is letting go. I'll have to do a little repair here. Look at these trims. Another one. Another one. More of those flowers. This gauzy or net uh, skirt type thing here. So there, this is this is a gift if you can imagine. This I don't know if you ever saw the video that Kim did on these uh, French fry bags. I think she bought accidentally, accidentally bought a box. Now I can't remember if it had a thousand in it or three thousand, but obviously Thelma. Uh, used, uh, decorated a bunch of them. So she let me pick a, a French fry bag. So this was when I was at her house. Uh, FYI, I did um, as a way to have a piece of Thelma, as a way to support her and express gratitude for her generosity with me. I did buy her steampunk journal, but unfortunately I won't get it until she hand delivers it in July. But stay tuned for that. <clears throat> so every morning, you know, one or the other would pick up the other. And then they pick me up. And then there was usually some uh, a fourth person in the car. So one morning, oh, the first day, I mean the first full day, Ruth Atkin um, was, you know, occupied the fourth seat. Now, hi, Ruth. Uh, I just love Ruth. Um, she laughed so easily and, you know, it was an instant connection. Anyway, I was riding shotgun many of the days and, um, so all of a sudden, you know, you get something hand, no one, maybe this wasn't that day. I, I'm confused, but anyway, you sort of get something, something comes almost flying at you from the back seat from Thelma. Four of us, or three of us, got this one day. No, this might have been day two. I can't remember. So this is like an old bed sheet strip. Beautiful tie. Works with the papers. Oh, this is um, a decorative file folder. And I have stuff like this. Quickly show you quickly flip through quick 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 I'm showing you these pages then there's this beautiful thing so I get the cameo and of course all four were different it was just luck of the draw but I happened to get the one with the cameo and it's got this Cyrillic writing here so that's always lovely uh, Thelma is part Ukrainian part Polish so we, we connected at that level too. And of course, Winnipeg um, has a huge Ukrainian population as well. So, I mean, had there been any time to, to think, this would have been a good uh, little journal to document some of what was happening. But I'm telling you, you know, when you're when you're living in the moment and every moment is scheduled and it's chop, chop, chop on to the next one. Um, there isn't time there. There's hardly time for bathroom breaks. I'm telling you, um, because it's just on to the next thing, on to the next stop. <clears throat> so this, of course, is beautiful. Now I have. Uh, said to Thelma that she had better. And the reason I 
didn't try to find space for it in the suitcase is because number one, it's one of those gigantic, you know, three or four inch spine things, heavy, and it would have, uh, I mean, it would have created a problem for me, volume and weight wise. But it also, she hadn't had a chance to photograph it. I said I would do a flip through when I get it. Uh, she maybe is going to do a flip through as well. Uh, and she hadn't done any photography off it. So so that was one thing, one additional thing from her. The morning I'm leaving, I get this handed to me. Again, heavy, purple, and it's nice. Now, I'm not going to open it because I don't remember what the final word was on sharing photographs. You know, most of us are not... <clears throat> Well, can I just say, we're women of a certain age. We're not glamour girls. It's more about what we're doing than, you know, it's not a fashion and lifestyle blog. Uh, it's, it's about what we're doing, sharing what we know, sharing life lessons, sharing wisdom, sharing humor. <clears throat> and, um, and really maybe a, a feeble attempt to protect our privacy as well. Although I guess that's oxymoronic when you think that, okay, you want to protect your privacy, but you're on YouTube. So, I mean, it is what it is. However, I took pictures of those women at the bottom of the escalator. And then there began this thing over Thursday and Friday. We covered... Um, southern manitoba like a blanket i don't know i don't think anyone set their tripodometer to zero to know how many miles were made i have to say there was a bit of backseat driving and no you go this way you turn left no the other blah, blah, blah. so at one point i offered to be a referee but uh, that wasn't really necessary because it's all done with love and humor um I do intend to find a map of Manitoba and circle all the places I've been because over time I will forget that. Anyway, in here are some photos that got printed overnight at Thelma's, apparently. She put together a little photo montage here. Anyway, I can't remember what place it was it might have been Steinbach, manitoba where they have this in front of a deer or beside a dealership they have this huge car and it says it was worth the trip so naturally i had to be photographed in front of that but of course i made them get into other photographs so that sort of became a bit of a thing then i had to be photographed under a giant or beside a giant turtle then in another place beside a giant pumpkin. Then on Saturday at the crop beside a creepy, scary, wooden man, <laughs> a stiff who stands outside the door of this little place that we were at. I don't know if he's supposed to be like a French-Canadian. I guess they have a festival there where they actually uh, do maple uh, sugar. Um, so anyway, I have photos with, with him as well. So, um, I will figure out if some of these photos can be shared because I don't want to, you know, do, you know, breach anyone's, uh, I don't want to make anyone unhappy because I know that I would be unhappy. Um, at one point, Kim handed all of us these business card holders and we think, oh, that's kind of handy. I mean, I would have to peel this off, but <clears throat> well, isn't that kind of handy? Of course, I don't have business cards, but I have one of those. The next morning, I get one of these thrown my way from the back seat. Thelma has bejeweled it. She made overnight, she made me a bunch of business cards very thoughtful and a hell of a lot faster than some of those, um, you know, hot shot printing services. <laughs> Her turnaround time was just excellent. So anyway, she added my, you know, mailing out. I don't know why, you know, that's my home phone number. YouTube channel, Etsy shop, 
And I mean, they did come in handy when I gave them to um, some people that I encountered. So maybe that's all I have to say about Thelma right at the moment. You know that you're with like-minded people. And one of the first things that your hostess, him, hands you is a 20% off coupon from Salvation Army. Just saying, this is how the week or the days went. This was something that I picked off the share pile. Uh, there are going to be some bare boobies on the next side, so maybe I won't. Okay. Those of you who, I guess, go to regularly go to crops know what this is all about. Again, crop virgin. I had heard about the share table. I'd heard that there, you know, that people, that some people were kind of like buzzards. Um, I may have been, I may have ex exhibited some buzzard-like characteristics. Um, anyway, this was on the table and I thought, oh, this is, isn't this lovely? So I bring we were kind of grouped in the room. There were there were over 20 people there, and everyone had a full table, which I gather was new. And, of course, who couldn't spread out? I'll tell you, people brought, and maybe this is normal for scrapbookers, laptops and cricket machines. And I don't know if there were printers there or not. There might have even been, print like, um... Uh, You'll be sorely disappointed at what I accomplished that day. But um, anyway, so I picked this up. I bring it back to the table. Kim says, oh, that, that was mine. <laughs> anyway, look at this. So a little piece of Kim that will hang, get a pride of place here somewhere. Um, when when uh, this is Kim's uh, business card, if you can imagine. So again, very distinctive. And of course, this only very special people actually get this kind of a card. But that too is, and it's done on a playing card. And she just does her, her stuff, her, you know, whatever, her info on top of that. And of course, it's zigzagged and layered and trim. And so again, a little beautiful memento of that. Then she hands me one of these. She said, don't get excited, it's not a journal. However, it is a needle book that apparently only the very special get. So I guess, well, this is a digital, and it says, whether I am near or far, I hope in some small way I can always help you hold it together. <laughs> So that's cute. So it's on a quilted, um, I don't know what that would have been. She told me, but again, kind of in one ear and out the other. Fancy, dancy button. A little glitzy rhinestone buckle. Lovely button. A little tiny, teeny tiny bobbin with some thread. And a lace closure. And then more little goodies packed inside some brads and some paper clips some pins and some bulb pins some paper clips I've never seen such tiny bobby pins before some straight pins a couple of needles <clears throat> and a couple fancy buttons and then at the back here another um, bobbin oh and that's good you know to have it on there you can't can't fall out with some lace. So again, this is just another way to, another little touching um, um, memento from Kim. And at one point, and you know, you know, sometimes I'm, I think I'm a fairly smart cookie, you know. Um, but sometimes it takes me a while to put two and two together. Anyway, I realized that I had never really seen Kim ever do a journal cover. Well, I kind of heard the story about that. So um, 
she says, don't worry, I'll, I'm going to make you a journal. And I said, well, why don't we, why don't we just plan to do, do a journal swap? I says, because, you know, it's fun, it's friendship, it's, it's a, uh, an exchange of, um, you know, generosity or acts of friendship or whatever. But, you know, mama didn't raise no fool. It's also about YouTube fodder. Um viewers, likes, subscriptions, and viewer, I mean, YouTube content. So I don't think we ever came to a resolution about that. But let's just say, um, I don't, we haven't laid out any rules or said, okay, this is when we're going to aim to do this, we'll synchronize, blah, blah, blah. So I don't know where that stands. Kim, I guess at some point, we'll have to sort that out. But, um, yeah. Oh, I got one more thing to show you. Oh, and I know Kim will be telling this story on her channel as well. One day we're in this town that had not one, not two, not three, not four, but five thrift stores. So typically we would spread out everyone some people made beelines to different areas and I thought I am not uh, going to be elbowing my way past these new friends of mine and grabbing anything out of anybody's hands there there seems to be this unwritten code that you kind of become aware of what the others are collecting if you find it uh, you put it in your cart and you show it to them when you bump into them again in the store or if you're, it's really something you want as well, then you share it. Um, anyway, so I, I typically was looking at books because, you know, books are so light. They just fit in your suitcase so beautifully. Not. Anyway, I'm in the book sort of crafty corner. And so is Kim. I find a book and, and it was beautiful and and maybe in hindsight, I should have kept it. But again, I've got more ideas and more plans than I will probably live long enough to execute. So I showed it to her and it was actually a very attractive book about Celine Dion. And, you know, we all obviously feel very sorry for this, the health state she's in now. But this book had so many beautiful images and Kim was enamored with it. So I said, take, you know, take it. It's yours. <coughs> anyway, <coughs> so we're, here we are just talking like normal, like we've known each other all our lives. We're talking about this would be great in a junk journal, and whatever. So this third person who's apparently eavesdropping says, are you junk journalers? And we say, yes, because, you know, like, who the hell knows about junk journalers? And I say, not only that, we're YouTube stars. And you honestly, you don't have to, and maybe it's the same with me, but you don't have to hear our voices for long to be able to recognize, to, to figure out from the voice who the person is. She says, you're Kim Newberg. And uh, she says, yes. It turns out that this woman's name is Lori Wood, and she's a subscriber of Kim's. So I happen to have a business card. I hand it to her, and I say, well, I certainly hope you check out my channel as well, and maybe you'll be uh, a subscriber of mine as well. You know, shameless plug. Anyway, talking to her for a while, and and um, she's saying that she's preparing for this upcoming craft show or something and offering, asking Kim some advice and so on. And um, anyway, then she says, uh, I got to I got to get a hug from like she's saying to Kim, I got to get a hug. She says, I'm not even a hugger. And I says, well, I got to hug you too. And, and, and in reality, I'm not much of a hugger either. But anyway, in the junk drawer, all, you know, everything flies out the window. Anyway, I says, well, I got to have a, a preemptive hug too, because hopefully you become a subscriber. Anyway, so that was all cool. I do need to do another shout out to Lori. Lori uh, was a sub is a subscriber and was saying, "Oh, I'm 
going to meet you in Winnipeg, blah, blah, blah. So I met Lori there uh, at the crop, as well as her sister-in-law, Mire. Hi, Mire. And I don't know, she's like, these girls, their first love is scrapbooking. So I hope Mire checks out my channel and who knows, there is that subscribe button there. Anyway, so that was lovely. Oh, one of the other things I got uh, from this from this Ukrainian uh, welcoming party was a, a thrifted framed Easter egg. So a Ukrainian decorated egg is called a pesanka. Plural is pesanka. Anyway, framed egg, stalks of wheat beside it. I'm thinking, how can I possibly get this home? And I do have framed eggs and I do have, you know, just loose eggs as well. It's got glass, it's got bulk, it's, you know, the frame, what if it gets broke? Anyway, so I bring it there thinking, well, maybe there's someone in this crop group who will want it. And I'm sort of telling my story, and Lori says, I would take it, I can give it to, and that somebody who's marrying into the family, I don't quite follow, didn't quite follow the story. But anyway, I was so relieved that Lori was able to take that. So I'm glad about that. Anyway. I met a lot of people at the crop, uh, some, you know, connected with more than others. Some didn't, you know, obviously didn't say a word with. Anyway, this woman comes up to me and says, I made you a journal. I, I hope that's okay. I hope it's, I, it's all right with you. And apparently she loves Halloween. So is it any surprise that this would be what she would give me? So I said, I start looking through and then I said, you know what? I'm not going to look through the rest. And this is like a jute linen-y type texture to it. And of course it's got that on it. I said, write, put your name on a piece of paper so that I can do a shout out. And so she is Diane Eisler and she's from Winnipeg. And of course it's 2024. So I said, you know what? Let me have a better look at this. I'll do a, a quick flip through on my channel. I will have, you know, I don't want to look at everything and then, you know, have to sort of fake surprise. So she was pretty proud of, and I think this needs a little more investigation. This was a closure that she had made. And that's a fine elastic. Uh, both, of, okay. Um, these things are both brads, but on this side, she had also put an eyelet and, you know, did the raise, raising it up so she could wrap the elastic around it. Anyway, this is pretty clever in that you could put other things around the brads and make it, so it's a closure, but it also slips off quite easily. So that, I think, needs to become a prototype. Then, of course, there's this little um, altered paper clip, which is so darn cute. And there's like a little Casper type. Whoops. He's tangled up. Um, I have to say, I'm really grateful for this journal. I... Honestly, because I have so many other things I want to do, I can almost say with 100% assurance that I will never make a, a Halloween journal. But isn't it lovely to have one that someone has given to me, basically sight unseen? This is going to need a little more finagling because, of course, everything took a bit of a beating um, in my overloaded suitcases. So this is avocado dyed paper in this little booklet with this, you know, obviously um, Halloween themed um, cover to it. So inside, and then when I opened this up, I thought, well, there's more. I'm going to just see, discover this with you on camera. So these fancy little pockets, and I guess, I don't know, is that two circles? With, of course, thematic little things tucked in. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. What is this? Oh, Eye of Toad. <laughs> So, a 
tiny little book made with, um, with obviously some dictionary paper inside. Actually, I thought it was always Eye of Newt, but apparently this is Eye of Tote. So this is some packaging that she covered with paper, a dimensional bat sticker, and some fancy dancy stitching in orange. That is cool. Another owl. See, I can get behind owls. I'm just not that keen on bats, but I mean a bat like that, I could certainly. Okay, so this, whoops, I'm getting hooked with my bracelet here. Uh, this lifts up, this is, I wonder, that maybe is a napkin. <laughs> That's pretty darn cool. Some people, act, and I think uh, Diane was one of them, was actually doing gel printing at the crop. So, like, I was amazed at how intensive some people get with their projects. Washi tape. Did some coloring. <laughs> Why does that... Oh, so she glued something on to his, well, his iris. You know, see, I can get around weird stuff like this, and I do love skeletons and, and things like that. Who knows? Well, I, I, I'm still pretty sure I'll never do, whoops, I'm still pretty sure I will never do a, and I guess this is a waterfall, isn't it? Um, still pretty sure I'll never do a Halloween journal, but I can certainly work some skulls and owls and things into projects. Yeah, and then, well, obviously paper too. Oh, here's another one. Game of Palmistry. See, I have a, oh, and here's a cat. That's kind of cool. Um, you know, these, uh, again, probably because I'm not a scrapbooker, but this business of, whoops, layering these things, that makes all the difference in the world. I'm probably just saying that probably sounded really dumb because that must be what all of you people do. <laughs> I'm the last one to the party. Anyway, I, Diane, I love it. I appreciate it. Glad I met you and, and the other ladies. <clears throat> I will, I'll tuck this in a pocket. I'll put all this back. I have no idea how long I've been rambling on here, but I did have a lot to say. Again, a final word. If you are Canadian and have a Nexus card that has expired, no. Oh, so I'm leaving Winnipeg. And the guy that, you know, one of the guys that's directing traffic, you know, go down and whatever. I say to him, you know, I have an expired Nexus card. He says, it's good for five years. I says, why are they not shouting it from the rooftops? He says, well, at first they said no extension. Then they said, well, we'll extend it uh, 180 days. And then they said, we'll extend it six months. And then they said, we'll extend it five years. He said, it's government. They don't know what they're doing. So remember, you heard it here first. If you have a Nexus card, use it. Five-year extension from the year, from the day and year off its expiration. Now, if that wasn't worth it, tuning in, then I don't know what was. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here. There will be more, much more to show you. 
And um, I'm sure I left a few more stories to tell as well. Beautiful. They cut. Uh, not just a pretty face. So, um, again, let me sign off just with a thank you to Kim for extending the invitation um, and delivering on everything you promised and more. Um, thank you to Thelma. You two really are, you know, partners in crime. Oh, <laughs> at the crop, I, s oh, at one of the, at one time, they made me pose uh, by the share table. And at that time, in the center of the table, it was probably about eight inches deep. So I'm kind of digging in there and making a face and whatever. Um, anyway, um, I said to whoever was listening, I said, you know, I thought that this might be like a support group. You know, I'm Hazel, I've got a problem. I says, but this is all, this secret society of yours is all here about everybody's an enabler. <laughs> so instead of a sponsor to help you, you know, cut back on the shopping, the hoarding, the whatever. Uh, yeah, everyone's an enabler. And of course, I became one right along with the rest of them. Anyway, thank you so much. Um, ladies, um, again, Thelma, um, Kim, uh, Ruth, I had so much fun with you. Uh, I also met another one of the Winnipeg girls and, and, uh, we spent Friday, the four of us, uh, that was Barb. Her, her roots are, are definitely in, uh, card making and so on. Um, yeah, it's it's been a slice, ladies. And um, anyway, I guess what I would say to those of you who haven't had the opportunity to do something like this, and I realize that not everybody on YouTube um, is as genuine and as generous as the people that I've encountered. Um. And I'm not saying that as criticism. Please understand that. Um, I don't know that I could be that kind of a hostess, to be perfectly honest. Um, I have, in my own small way, reached out to people in Alberta. Um, and some of those things have been dead ends. I, 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 you know, I gotta tell it as it is. Um, um, you know, we have, a uh, three of us, Joan and Brenda, and I do have a tentative plan to meet. Uh, I have had, I have met Lorna Taylor. I have met, um, Sheila Gingrich from Boho Daydreams. This was probably two years ago. So, um, there, you know, you can like people's videos until the cows come home, but truly it does, um, close a circle and it does, um, embed itself in your heart when you actually meet these people eyeball to eyeball, exchange hugs, exchange stories, exchange, you know, sad stories, uh, mistakes made, you know, those kinds of things that, that as women, <clears throat> you know, tend to, to happen to us or, um, whatever. Um, it's only then that you understand the full extent of, of the preciousness of finding and hanging out with people who are like-minded. Um, and when Thelma has a, a moment to um, catch her breath, she has promised um, <laughs> the day of the crop, the noon meal was chicken stew. And that sounds, you know, kind of humble and stick to your ribs kind of food. It was so delicious. I said, I need the recipe. Ruth says, I need the recipe. Other voices around us start popping up. I need the recipe. 
So she's pointing to her head and saying, well, it's all up here. But she did promise us that she would um, get it from her head onto, <laughs> onto paper and share it with us at some point. So I would be happy to put that on my a community page or, or whatever, because I'm telling you, I don't know that I would eat beef stew again after this. Uh, it was truly delicious. And maybe, you know, maybe I'll just say maybe it was even more delicious because it was shared with the company of friends. But yeah, truly a good recipe that we should all have in our repertoire. And you know, this kid ain't no cook or baker. So anyway, just saying. And finally, I'm saying goodbye. And we will see you in the next one. Bye.